Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about 7.1F application of a geometry sequence. So you are going to determine if a geometry sequence is increasing or decreasing to find the common ratio in the application problems. And you are going to find nth term of geometry sequence in the application problems. So we learned how to find the common ratio before when certain things increase or decrease by the percentage. So common ratio R equal to one plus the percentage. So deposit is increasing due to interest 8%, while population is increasing with a certain percentage 10%. So this is loan balance decreasing and population decreasing. But when it is decreasing, R equal to what? One minus the percentage. So you know how to get it, right? So what is this? 1.08, 1 plus 0 0.08. How about this one? 1.1, 1, 1 plus 0 0.1. If it's decreasing by 6%, what do you do? 1 minus 0 0.06 is 0 0.94 will be R, the common ratio. And then decreasing by 10%, 0 0.9, right? You get it? Good. So that we know the explicit formula. And then G of N, why did I give you this? G of N equal to what? First term, R to the N power. What is this? Oh, what is this? Hmm. I say explicit formula Z1. So first the term times R to the N minus one power. And now I give you G1 times R to the N power. What's going on? So exponent is N instead of N minus one here. What makes it like this? Now we should understand this part. So we use n minus one usually, right? You, so when the sequence is already listed or the given number, the first term is actually first term, but we use n. Now, can you read this? In, when initial amount is not considered as the first term, but actual that will be zero term, time zero. So some number amount is given, but that's not considered as a first term. So you should be careful. You should read the question carefully. If it is, you, if it is considered as the first term, it's okay. We just go as it is like a n minus one power, right? But today we are going to focus on the, this one. The number is not considered as the first term. That time zero, zero term is the beginning, but didn't the first term pass there? Then we are going to use n. So your sequence is given like this. Two is the first term, right? Then we are going to use the G1 times R to the N minus one power, right? Like this is the first term. Then we use this formula. But look at this, 80 and then 80 times R, you multiply $80 is given, but I don't know, it could be interest, it could be loan amount, but we can start the counting from the first term is from here. And then this will be the first term, right? Then 80 is not the first term. That is a time zero, right? So like this. Then if you see that this is time zero is not first term, then G1 time R to the N power, not the N minus one power. That we should remember. So either you have two choices, right? N minus one power, N. How do you differentiate? You understand. 
First term, zero term. First term, zero term. All right? Let's see with the example here. John has certificate of deposit in the amount of $500 in the bank. So you deposited $500 in the bank. The bank pays him 10% of interest at the end of every year. Uh, then the interest will be added to the balance of the next for next year. So how much will he have in his account after 15 years? After 15 years. So most important thing is first term, right? It goes by year. One year first term is, means after one year. Second term is after two years. 15 is after 15 years. So we should pay attention to the after one year. After one year, right? That, do you understand? After one year, do you get the 500? Is the $500 don't change? After one year, that will be the first term, right? After one year will be the first term. Is it 500? No. There will be interest after one year. The 500 what? That will be considered a zero term. <coughs> Excuse me. Zero term, right? So let's think about it. You know the R is 1 plus 0 0.1, 10%, 1.1. .1. Now, 500 zero term or first term? Zero term, one year later. is one year later is the first term. And then we are going to get 15 years later, right? So then this is zero term. What formula do we use? It's simple now. We are going to use n power. <coughs> Excuse me. So, this is a zero term, so formula will be n power. 500 times 1.1 1 .1 to the n power. <clears throat> then what is the G15? You plug 15 into n. And then put it into the calculator. Calculator will give you $2,088.62. Do you understand? So you know what to focus on, right? <clears throat> This number is the first term or zero term. That, that will make it simple. It's the first term or zero term, time zero. So today's we are focusing on this is a zero term. But the usually we are using the n minus one power. If it is the first term, we did in the last lesson. So you can go back to the last lesson and compare again. That might be helpful for. <clears throat> so can you check with this one? So you have two questions here. Can you try? So population, 20,000 people, decline 5% each year for the next seven years. After seven years, how many? It's not some problem, right? It's not some. It's not some of the oldest, you know, the population each year, it doesn't make sense. Anyway, it's not the some problem. And here, how many people? So explicit formula is it, All right? <clears throat> here, in this case, 30,000, 4% decline four, by 4%, eight years. So I want you to just try by yourself and compare your answer with this. All right? Declining, subtract, so 0 0.95, 5%, 4%. So n equals seven, here's n equals six. So your population, 20,000 at the time is time zero, one year later, right? So that will be time zero, right? So you're going to use power of n. So seven here. A here, seven years later, eight years later, all right? 
then you will answer will be like this. All right, so we'll stop here.